in this video we will see how matrices can do geometric transformations and consequently we will visualize eigenvectors and eigenvalues let us consider a vector uh, say x given by x1 x2 in a two dimensional plane uh, say the vector will look something like this say this is my x equal to x1 x2 uh, now let a be an arbitrary 2 cross 2 matrix uh, given by a b c d now if i multiply a with x let us see what we get so clearly a x will be equal to a x1 plus b x2 and c x1 plus d x2 so clearly a x will be another vector uh, say it is given by x it is it is denoted as x prime so now that means depending on the elements of a uh, my x prime or a x can be uh, say something like this my x prime can be like this or or my x prime can be something like this or my x prime can be something like this depending on what is your value for uh, values of a b c d so we can say therefore we can say that therefore we can say that this matrix a this matrix a transforms x into x prime so in this case we can say that there this matrix a transform x to x prime or in this case we can say the matrix a transforms x to x prime so this thing happens when you operate or you multiply a matrix to a vector so this is the scenario in the two dimensional plane a similar kind of scenario happen if you consider a three cross three matrix but that will happen in a three dimensional plane and your vector has to be uh, a, a triplet accordingly a vector will, uh, your vector will be a vector in the three dimensional plane now let us see an an example for example if we consider for example if we consider say my my x is actually say my x is equals to 1 2 arbitrarily chosen you can choose any other vector as you wish and let a is equals to sorry let x equals to this and let a is equals to 1 1 0 minus 1 i have written arbitrarily i'm writing arbitrarily therefore what will be my ax therefore ax will be just quickly calculate and tell me ax will be 1 1 0 minus 1 into 1 2 so that means this will be 1 into 1 plus 1 into 2 and 0 into 1 plus minus 1 into 2 so this will be equals to therefore this will be equal to 1 plus 2 that is 3 and 0 so 3 minus 2 therefore ax will be equal to 3 minus 2 now if we plot this uh, let us see how the plot will be say this is my x x the vector 1 2 so therefore x prime will be 3 minus 2 that means 3 minus 2 will be something like this roughly speaking 3 minus 2 will be something like this so x prime is 3 minus 2 therefore we can write my matrix a is transforming this vector x 1 to 2 x prime 3 minus 2 that means the matrix a which is given by 1 1 0 minus 1 is making this transformation or the vector 1 2 gets transformed to the vector 3 minus 2 when you operate this matrix 
uh my vector 1 0 the unit vector 1 0 and along y axis this one my unit vector 0 1 and let us see uh what will be the change in these two unit vectors when you operate a matrix say um, my matrix here is say for example a is equals to uh, say 2, 0, 0, 3. Let us see what will happen to these two vectors. So, um, uh, so let us calculate. So, that means for 1, 0, if we consider where 1, 0, what will be the change in 1, 0? So, the calculation will be 2, 0, 0, 3 into 1, 0. So, if you calculate what you will get, you will get 2, 0. You will get 2, 0. So, your calculation will be 1, 0 when operated with the matrix 2, 0, 0, 3 will become 2, 0. So, that means this yellow, uh, 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 means this, this unit vector 1, 0. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me use two different colors. Now, <clears throat> That means uh, due to when you operate this matrix A, your YOLO vector, that is the unit vector 1, 0, gets transformed to the vector, gets transformed to the vector, say 2, 0, maybe like this, something like this. So now your unit vector 1, 0 gets transformed to this new unit vector denoted by 2, 0, which is like this. And, and, your unit vector along the y axis that is 0, 1. Let us see what happened with that. So, 2, 0, 0, 3 operate with 0, 1. We will be getting if we multiply it will be what 0, 3. So, your pink unit vector now will shift to 0, 3, 0, 3, maybe something like this 0. Something like this. So this say this is my 0, 3. So my pink vector will transform to this. Now if we think about say a, a small region, say uh, if I think about a small region, that means say if I think about this particular region, this small square here. So any vector in this region, any vector, any vector in this region will 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 transform accordingly so if i consider that means in this diagram the region will be like something like this so this is my original region so can you tell me in this in this particular due to this particular transformation where this where this region will will change what will be the change in this particular region now this small square due to this matrix operation will 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 change to will change to this particular rectangle now will change to this rectangle now so the square will now stretch to this rectangle am i right or not so originally whatever was this particular square now this square changed to this rectangle due to due to this matrix operation. So we can say this matrix transforms this region to this uh, uh, to the square region to a rectangular region. Now this operation, this matrix, that's why this particular operation of this matrix transformation, we can, we can name as say stretching. We can call this as stretching. 
stretching or 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 we can say scaling about origin or we can call it scaling about origin so this is what is happening when you when you operate this particular matrix a when you operate this particular matrix a on this kind of a region this kind of a transformation happens let us see a few more now let us consider the matrix <clears throat> a is equals to say minus 1 0 0 minus 1 so now let us see what happens when this matrix operates on the vector 1 0 so minus 1 0 0 minus 1 into 1 0 that means that will be equal to minus 1 0 so uh, you can see this minus 1 0 this yellow vectors now transforms to sorry 1 0 this yellow vector gets transformed to minus 1 0 that means uh, the new yellow vector will uh, means the yellow vector will change to this if i call this as minus 1 0 and similarly for the other one minus 1 0 0 minus 1 when operates on 0 1 the pink vector uh, if you multiply the two you will get 0 minus 1 0 minus 1 so the pink vector accordingly will become will transform to this one if i consider this as my 0 minus 1 so likewise the previous case if i consider this particular region this region gets transformed this region this region means this small square which is formed by these two unit vectors when you operate this matrix this region gets transformed to this particular region that means uh, you can just think that the whole whole square that the whole region just got reflected about origin nothing else so it is just reflected about origin that's why this operation sometimes called as a reflection we call this operation as reflection we can call this as reflection about reflection about origin that's it reflection about origin so this is how uh, that means this particular matrix if we consider what this matrix does to a particular particular region what this matrix does to a particular region or a particular shape it reflects that with respect to or it reflects that about origin that is what this matrix does as a transformation uh, now let us see another one let my matrix be a is equals to a is equals to 1 0 and 1 by root 3 1 let this is my matrix so clearly when a operates when a operates on 1 0 we will get 1 0 you can simply calculate and find out therefore uh, the unit vector along x axis that is the yellow vector that will remain same in its position 1 0 and whenever your this a operates on 0 1 it will be shifted to 1 by root 3 1 the vector will become this one that means this pink vector will now shift it to 1 by root 3 1 1 by root 3 1 uh, will be something like something like this therefore uh, the region the region will get shifted to something like this so so whatever was our region earlier so whatever was our region earlier means if we if i show it in the same diagram means earlier the region was like this dotted by this blue things so this region got transformed to this particular region that means we can think about this as a shear we can think about this as a horizontal shear that or shear in x direction so we can call it as, call it as horizontal shear so the 
regions are getting transformed in this way. Now, uh, further, if if we if we denote the angle of this shear, if this angle is say phi, and say this angle is phi, then we can uh, we can we can we can write that the generic form of this horizontal sphere will be uh, one zero tan phi one. So what this kind of a matrix does, this kind of a matrix when operated on a particular shape or when operated on a, on a particular region, the region gets a horizontal shear and the angle of that shear in this way will be phi, will be phi. As you can see uh, here, your little square gets shifted to, uh, got sheared in this way. So this is another kind of matrix transformation. That means this A, uh, this A is a matrix which will make horizontal shears in this way. Now, uh, uh, let us see one more, one more example. Now let the matrix be, now let the matrix be A is equals to, say um, A is equals to one, divided by square root of 2 minus 1 divided by square root of 2 and 1 divided by square root of 2 and 1 divided by square root of 2. Let's have a complicated matrix. Let us suppose this is my new matrix. Let us see what happens to this region when we operate this particular matrix. So clearly, uh, mm, mm, you can understand that A when operated with 1, 0 will become the first column because actually when you operate any matrix to the identity, uh, to the to the unit vectors, to the unit vectors, uh, then suddenly you will get the columns accordingly. So when I apply it on 1, 0, so I will get 1 by the vector 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, so this. Now, 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, that will be a vector, means the yellow vector will look something like this. Now, again, if we operate, if we operate this A on 0, 1, what will be my answer? My answer will be the second column, pretty simple, because it is the unit vector. So, it will be 1 by root 2, minus 1 by root 2, and 1 by root 2. So, minus 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, that will be a vector. Therefore, this region will now, the, the small square, which you can see in the left side, after transformation, the region will be, will be converted to something like uh, this, if I consider. That means, what happened, can you tell me? <clears throat> what happened, can you tell me? So, our region got rotated. So, our region got rotated. Now, if we consider that the angle of this rotation is say, say theta, means if we consider that it rotated in this way, then uh, we know that we can express this A as, we can write this A as uh, cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. So, if we think, what this kind of a matrix will do, I have just written a generic form instead of writing any 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 number or like that. I I use the angle of rotation here. So if I consider what this matrix A will do to any shape or any region, the answer will be when you operate this matrix A on that particular shape or a region, your region will get rotated. That's why this is called a rotation about a rotation about origin. Now all these things that we have done in two dimension, the same geometry uh, uh, will, will remain in three dimension also. The same geometry will remain in 3D also. Uh, because uh, uh, means, means suppose if you, if you want to apply rotation in three dimension, so how you will, how your matrix will be, will be, uh, it will be simple like, uh, mm, mm, it will be a three cross three matrix where I'll have cos theta, minus sine theta, sine theta, cos theta. And I will try to keep all the z values intact. So for that, I will make it 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So this. So uh, uh, if I, in, in three dimension, 
the 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 matrix that will make this rotation happen or thus that will rotate the shape uh, a, a, a vector in a three dimensional plane will be like this can be represented i have tried to uh, why i why i uh, uh, make this third row and third column 0, 0, 001 because i am keeping all the z values intact so that's it in this way you can you can uh, visualize matrices as as uh, as operators which rotates or trans which which transforms your your shape or your region now depending on your matrix the transformation can be stretching can be shear can be reflection can be inversion can be rotation can be anything so this is what is uh, done by a matrix uh, if we consider this perspective as a as a as an as an element as an operand which transforms your shape or your region now let us see if we can figure out the generic nature of change that is happening to the unit vectors and and one other vector and one other vector uh, let us see uh, in in a in a generic way what change is happening to these g vectors so if you come to the transformed diagram if you come to the transformed diagram you can understand that your your pink vector got stretched means the magnitude of the pink vector increased only but it is remaining in the same span its direction is same and it is remaining in the same span for the yellow vector also for the yellow vector also the magnitude increased but it is also remaining in the same span but if we consider this vector the third one originally it is like this now after you you do this stretching or scaling this vector will become this one so uh, this uh, vector the third vector this is not remaining in the same span the span of the third vector gets changed so if i denote this yellow vector by say x if i denote this say yellow vector if i denote this yellow vector say by x and this pink vector by say y then i can write here ax is equal to 2x ay is equal to 3y but if i consider uh, if i say i am naming this vector as z then i have to say az will be equal to a completely different vector that is z prime the span is getting changed let us see what happens for the uh, for the second one that is reflection about origin again here if i if i introduce this third one to study say this one now here uh, this one this one so you can see that your pink vector lying in the same span but its direction got changed but it is lying in the same span the pink vector is lying in the same span only its direction got changed but the span is same so uh, and the same thing happening for the yellow one also for the yellow vector uh, it is lying in the same span uh, uh, but the only the direction got changed and 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 in this case the magnitudes are also same and for the third vector also you can see uh, that uh, they are lying in the same span the direction got changed but the span is same on the same line if i if i if i think in that way so that means here also i can write ax x is the yellow one so this is my x y is the pink one and z is the third one new one so ax will be equal to minus 1 into x ay will be what will be again minus 1 into y and az that will be what that will be uh, again the same thing minus 1 into z so this thing that means here all three vectors are lying in the same span in the previous case out of three two were lying in the same span now let us uh, see the uh, uh, see this case the horizontal shear what is happening with these vectors so now we can see here if okay let me introduce the uh, the third vector first so this is my third vector in this diagram 
So you can see here, you can see here that uh, which vectors are changing the span, can you tell me? The yellow one, that is one zero, is remaining in the same span. Now the pink one, for the pink one also, uh, the span got changed and we got a totally new vector. And for the third one also, that is the diagonally whatever is drawn. So that also changed the span and we got a completely new vector. Uh, the span has got, uh, the span uh, has been changed. New vector means I'm saying uh, uh, totally in a different span, totally in a different span. So if I write here the phenomena, what will happen? A X, what is my X? X is the yellow one. X is the yellow one, Y is the pink one, and Z is the third one. So AX will be equal to, X remains the same. X remains the same here. So AX is equal to 1 into X. What is my AY? AY will be equal to uh, a completely new, 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 means a, a, a new vector in a new span. So let us write Y prime. And uh, what will be my AZ? A z will be again a totally new vector, say that is uh, z prime. Now remember uh, z prime that I wrote earlier and this z prime means z prime I have written here and that z prime is not same. I'm just using a, a notation to say that this z and the new one is different. So you can call it z double prime also if you have that confusion. So anyway, so a z is equal to a, a totally new vector, say z double prime, that is what. So this is what we are getting. So in this particular case, only one vector is remaining in the same span. All others are changing the span. And I'm saying uh, remaining in the same span means, remaining in the same span means only your magnitude can increase or your direction can change. Means your direction can get reversed. But the span uh, means it will remain in the same line segment if you think in that way. Now let us see what happens for this case rotation about origin. Can you tell me which vectors will remain in the same span? Uh, this vector in this case will be, will come to probably this place. So which vectors will remain in the same span? Yeah, absolutely correct. No one, none of the vectors will remain in the same span. So. Uh, if I consider a x, that will be mm, that will be some other vector, say x prime. If I consider a y, that will be some other vector, say y double prime. If I consider another one, say a z, that will be some other vector, say z double triple prime. So I have used y double prime because I have used y prime earlier. But uh, but uh, if I write here y prime, that's not a problem. The context are different, so you can understand what I mean to say is a vector in a totally different span. That is the point. So now, in this case, none of the vectors are lying in the same span. So if I if I look at here again, in the first example, that means when you are scaling, when you are scaling, if I look in this way, when you are scaling, in that case, in that case, these two vectors, in that case, these two vectors are remaining in the same span. When you are reflecting, all the three vectors are remaining in the same span. The other vectors may change the span, but these vectors are remaining in the same span. When it is horizontal shearing, when it is horizontal shearing, only one vector, that is a vector which lies along the horizontal, means as per the diagram, means the, I'm saying only one vector means as per the three vectors that we have drawn among them. Only this one change, uh, this one remains, one vector remains in the same span. And for a rotation, none of the vectors remain in the same span. Now, these vectors which remain in the same span are known as eigenvectors or characteristic vectors. So, in this case, among the three, for the first case, scaling among the three, two of them are eigenvectors. And how we can write, that means those vectors which are remaining in the same span, we can write them as A, for this matrix A, for this specific matrix A, if or if A is any matrix, then I can write A, if that vector which is remaining in the same span is denoted by V, then we are writing this A in, into V or A when operated with, with V will be equal to 
if you look at the form some scalar say that is lambda into that vector v so we can write the eigen vectors in this way as we can see here in this case also a when operates with the vector v we get lambda v remember this v has to be a non null vector so this v has to be a non null vector this v cannot be a null vector because if you consider a null vector then it becomes a it, it, it will give you a trivial trivial identity if you consider this as a null vector the relationship will be become trivial so all such non null vectors which can be represented in this way for a matrix a will be called as an eigen vector or 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 characteristic vector and all such vectors will be called eigen vectors or characteristic vectors so that means we will say this matrix a will have no eigen vector uh, if, uh, 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 in case of rotation means whatever is the matrix this matrix a we will see we will say that this matrix a will have no eigen vectors this poses no eigen vector so this is how we can visualize eigen vectors and at the same point of time we got the definition of eigen vectors also if i ask you now for a matrix a how you will define eigen vectors you will see you will immediately answer me that eigen vectors are those non null vectors which can be expressed in this way for some scalar lambda where lambda is where lambda is a scalar where lambda is a scalar now this scalar lambda is known as the eigen value this scalar lambda is known as the eigen value so how eigen vectors are defined uh, you have got it and how eigen values are defined you have got it so what eigen value tells us eigen value tells us that what what kind of a magnification or a, or a, or 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 a reduction that happened with with your vector so uh, when you, when the when the matrix is operated on that that may, uh, you can see an example also that in the for this vector x for this vector x your eigen value is 2 and accordingly you can see in this diagram your vector got doubled so it is a double magnification and the, in this case the magnitude increased increased by a multiple of 2 in this case also for y the eigen value is 3 so you can see here the magnitude of this pink vector uh, 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 the magnitude got increased as a 3 multiple so the eigen value tells you what kind of a magnification um, will will happen to your matrix or in or 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 in this case in the second one when it is a reflection your eigen value is minus 1 for x in fact for all the vectors eigen value is minus 1 that means your 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 vector got inverted so your vector got inverted means the direction got changed on the same span lying in the same span so this is the geometry of eigen vectors and eigen values but let me tell you one more thing let me tell you one more thing that is the thing is that uh, see uh, uh, can you tell me uh, means this is how this is how to identify eigen vectors and eigen values geometrically but always it will not be possible for us to do this checking for all the vectors in your region because your region contains infinite number of vectors so how we can identify all those uh, 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 all those means how we can test for whether it is an eigen vector or not or what is the eigen value for all those infinite number of uh, vectors present in your region visually uh, or geometrically doing it always not is is not possible always that's why we need some algebraic method by which we can calculate and we can get it done for, for example for example if you consider this particular uh, case of of stretching or scaling about the origin when we when we did when we did uh, there may be there may be some other vector among all the possible choices uh, which which may be may be an eigen vector which also may remain in the same span uh, you, you can think about it or or in case of reflection actually all the vectors will will remain in the same span or in case of say when it is a shear uh, apart from this one there may be some other vector which also remain in the same place or the point is 
here uh, uh, your your transformation can be a combination of any two of these basic transformations means i have i have stated here only basic transformations your transformation can be a mixture of the two so in that case it will be very difficult to identify or visually which are your eigen vectors so that's why we need a we need some algebraic method let us develop the methods and at the algebraic method uh, developing an, a, a formula to compute algebraic formula to compute eigen vectors and eigen values are pretty simple we have almost got that so if i again write the definition that we have got what do you got we got that we will say a vector v which is a non null vector will be an eigen vector for a matrix a if a operated with v is equals to lambda v where lambda is some scalar that means this implies a minus lambda i i is the identity identity matrix of the same size as of a a is a square matrix i is an identity matrix of the same size as that of a so a minus lambda i of into v or operated with v will be equal to null vector will be equal to null vector so that means we can we can we can this implies or we can say from this that therefore determinant of a minus lambda i will be equals to zero so here, uh, this is equal to zero determinant a minus lambda i is equal to zero so what this will tell us this will give us that means when when we when we expand this determinant you can understand if i expand this determinant what i will get i will get a polynomial a polynomial uh, 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 of of in terms of lambda for example for example if we do it for example if we do it for the say for the first one for the first problem 2003 say if i do this thing for the first problem let us see what we get we get a minus lambda i. so 2003 minus for the first problem i'm doing it minus lambda into i means 1001 say that is equals to say that is equals to 0 this implies 2 minus lambda 0 0 3 minus lambda sorry 3 minus lambda 3 minus lambda is equals to 0 now this will imply 2 minus lambda into 3 minus lambda is equals to 0 which implies lambda is equals to 2 and 3 so lambda will have two values 2 and 3 now now we will plug in the value of lambda in this particular relationship and we will we will find out what is v so uh, uh, a is known to us lambda is known to us we will we will find out what is v that is how we can algebraically find out eigenvectors and 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 you can check also you can check also uh, for this problem for this problem yes we geometrically have seen also that uh, my uh, my eigenvalues are 2 and 3 so corresponding to 2 my eigenvalue has to be um, uh, my eigenvector has to be 1 one zero and corresponding to three my eigenvector has to be uh, zero one so if you if you if you calculate you you will get that also if you calculate once you calculate you will get that also so uh, this is the, about the geometry of eigenvalue and eigenvector and the geometry tells us that uh, the definition of eigen eigenvector eigen eigenvector is that non-null vector which satisfies this particular this particular equation and this lambda is your Eigen value and and the polynomial and the and and this polynomial the polynomial that you will be getting as a data as as an expansion of the, this determinant that means that polynomial in terms of lambda will be known as characteristic polynomial characteristic because this will ultimately give you the characteristic values or Eigen values characteristic polynomial polynomial and this equation uh, will be known as the characteristic equation this equation will be known as the characteristic equation I'm, i've written in short ch means characteristic characteristic equation so the equation will be known as the 
characteristic of this thing. So how to find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors in a generic way, I means without even, even bothering about all this geometry or without thinking about its graphical representation, you find out the characteristic equation. Uh, uh, first, find out the characteristic polynomial, find out the characteristic equation, solve the characteristic equation, get the values of lambda, that means get the eigenvalues, plug in the eigenvalues in the in, in, in this equation, A V equal to lambda V, and find out V. So that is that is what algebraically how, how we can find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So this is the geometry of eigenvalue and eigenvector. Now in the next next video, I will show you how you can find out algebraically how you can find out eigenvalues and eigenvectors in terms of some examples and you will see that the calculation will be a bit tricky but it will be a very nice exercise once you understand this geometry and this formation and if you have the representation in the back of your mind then uh, then working with this eigenvalues and eigenvectors will be extremely fascinating and these as huge applications in, in in different branches, in almost all the branches, the concept of eigenvalue and eigenvector will be hugely useful. So, in the next video, I'll show you how, even if you don't, 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 uh, rem means even if you don't draw anything, even if you don't plot anything, you will be able to find out what will be your eigenvectors and eigenvalues. So, see you in the next video. Take care.